Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. And in this video, we are going to look into a very important AWS service that is AWS API Gateway. We will first understand what exactly is API Gateway. After that, we will have a quick demo of AWS API Gateway. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. All right, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. Very simple agenda, AWS API Gateway. So first we will understand what exactly is API Gateway. We will see what is the use case of it and how it helps us. After that, we will see hands on demo on how we can create AWS API Gateway on AWS, right? So simple stuff we are going to look into. So let's get started. So let's go to Canvas over here. And now let's say I have created a backend service. So my service is running basically, let's say, and I have various clients. Let's say someone is trying to connect to my application by using mobile phone. Some is trying to connect by using browsers. What I'll do, I'll expose an endpoint. So there will be kind of an endpoint that I will share with these people. And what they will do, they will try to hit that endpoint over internet, right? This guy will also try to hit that particular API. Now, once we hit that particular API in a browser, it will land on my backend service. Not a problem, right? Not a big deal. We have seen this multiple times, right? Not a problem. Now let's say I create another service, right? So let's say I have another service. Let's say backend service one. Now what I will have, I will have some other API of this guy. Now what I will have to do, I will have to again provide this API to my client. Now if they want to invoke my backend one, then they will need to hit a different API. Let's say there is some different API they are hitting. So different API. Let's say I have thousand backend services. Am I going to share thousand API with people? that dude based on your use case call the respective API, right? We cannot say that. After that, for each service, each backend service, you need to have security as well, different security for each backend service. So everything will be a challenge like authentication, security, scaling, right? Many things will be a challenge over here. Even your monitoring, versioning and handling these multiple APIs will be a challenge, right? So that is basically a problem. Now to overcome all these things, our friend API gateway comes into which so what we'll do we'll just put an entry point of all my applications saying API gateway now this API gateway acts as a front door to all my backend services so now in this case your client will only have one API which is the API of your API gateway and once the request comes over here once this request is coming over here this guy will route the request to respective backend service and this service can be anything be it running inside your AWS be it running outside of your AWS any backend service which is let's say a serverless or with the server it doesn't even matter over here so the respective routing will be handled by your API gateway after that in general there are many things that API gateway provides us for example authentication routing rate limiting throttling the monitoring aspects as well or let's say caching as well will be provided or you can also transform your incoming request in your API gateway. So sounds fun, right? It's very fun stuff. API gateway is very, very useful stuff. And it is very, very useful when you are designing a serverless applications by using AWS Lambda. So that is something we are going to look into. Now, when we talk about AWS API gateway, so let me scroll down over here. Now, everything will be same, just that your API gateway is basically provided by AWS. So it is basically a service which lets you create API gateway inside AWS environment, right? So simple stuff basically. And by using this API gateway, you can expose an endpoint to outside world and they will call that particular endpoint. Once you receive that, you can decide where to call. For example, you can invoke a Lambda function, which is a serverless application, or you can invoke EC2 as well. That means your server or application running on EC2 instance. After that, you can invoke any other thing like ECS. So ECS is again a fun service or very, very important service that we are going to look into in future videos, which will let us deploy containers as a service on this particular ECS service. So be it ECS, right? So anything can be routed or let's say there is something outside. So let's say there is an application, right, which is running outside AWS. Now this service is outside AWS. This also we can connect, right? We can just connect to this particular service as well. That also is something you can do, right? So simple stuff basically. Now let's quickly go through a definition. So Amazon API Gateway is fully managed service that lets you create, publish, secure and monitor APIs at scale. It acts as a front door for applications to access data, business logic and services running on AWS or maybe outside AWS as well. 
that is basically the simple stuff. Now what we can do, let's go ahead and try to create API gateway. So I will go to AWS. So this is basically my AWS console again. Now I have logged in by using my user. Now what I will do, I can just go ahead and search API gateway over here. I can click on it. And there we go, API gateway, create and manage APIs at scale. That means it is a scalable service basically. Amazon API gateway is fully managed service that makes it easy for developers to create, publish, maintain, monitor and secure APIs. And you will see that they have given this particular diagram as well. That is something which we have seen, right? Basically, if you see over here, so let me try to zoom it a bit. If you see at the left hand side, you have this particular users. After that, you have Amazon API gateway and by using which you can connect to various services. For example, AWS Lambda EC2, be it Amazon Kinesis Streams, be it Amazon DynamoDB, other AWS services, lot of stuff, right? After that, it will give you API gateway cache as well. Frequent request will be handled by this particular cache. No need to call your backend service. After that, you have Amazon CloudWatch support for your monitoring purpose. Now what we can do, we can just go ahead and create an API for us. Now here you have choose an API type. That means you can create a HTTP API or you can create a WebSocket API. You can create a REST API or you can create a private REST API as well. Now what we can do, let's try to create a REST API over here. So it says develop a REST API where you can gain complete control over the request and response along with API management capabilities. And it works with pretty much everything. Let's say Lambda or HTTP or your AWS services. So Lambda is basically serverless. HTTP is basically other HTTP service which may be running outside your AWS environment. Does not really matter. Or after that, AWS services, pretty much every service like EC2, ECS or Amazon Kinesis, right? So let's try to build it. Now here, again, you will see that you will have again four options. Create new API or clone existing API if you want to clone or you can import it as well from open API definition as well, right? So that also you can do. After that, we have example APIs. So this is basically for learning purpose, right? So let's try to create a new API and I will say my REST API as it is suggesting. Let's give that name. Now here, if you see, we have this API endpoint type. So regional APIs basically will be deployed in current AWS region. So I'm in Asia Pacific, right? So if I select regional, it will be deployed in this particular region. If I select age optimized, then age optimized API is route request to the nearest cloud front point of presence. So it is basically based on your geolocation or private. That means it will not be accessible publicly. It will be accessible only through virtual private cloud. Now for now, I'll just say regional for that you have IP address type. So let's keep IPv4 over here and let's say create API. So there is nothing much over here. Now, once it is created, you will see that our API is created say successfully created REST API, my REST API. And if you see over here, we don't have much over here basically. So now here we have resources, right? That means you will have certain kind of link for that you will have slash. And let's say I want to add a resource. That means let's say I want to get books. So I will add slash books. For now, let's keep the root resource only because we are going to have only one API. After that, what you need is a method. That means when we invoke this particular resource, when I say my endpoint slash, what we are going to hit. So I will add a method now. What will happen once we hit that particular API. Now here method type, I'll say get. That means I want to invoke get API. After that, I can invoke a Lambda function from here. So this is basically now your integration between API gateway and your backend service. So if I go back over here, so this is basically the integration that we are doing now. So if I go back over here, we have many options like AWS Lambda, HTTP, we have mock if you have any mocker so that we have any AWS service or VPC link. So what we can do, we can just invoke an API of JSON placeholder. So if I go over here and hit this particular API, so this is basically a JSON placeholder which returns us this particular data, right? So it is already running service somewhere. So let's use that. So this is basically some application running outside AWS for us, right? Now I will just select HTTP from here. Here I'll say HTTP method as get because it's a get API. I'll just put this URL over here, which is the URL of JSON placeholder. After that, we have few more settings such as content handling and integration timeouts. So this is basically for your content conversion. If you want to convert any incoming content to binary or text, I will just select pass through over here. After that, we have integration timeout. That means if your backend service, this guy is taking a lot of time, then we can time it out 
after that you can configure authorization if you have any over here after that you can give query parameters over here you can give request headers over here or you can give request bodies over here right but now this particular api does not really have much over here so we will just say create method so now this method is created for us let me minimize this so now this particular method is basically created now if you see it gives us a cute little diagram over here which says client will send the request it will go to method request then it will go to integration request then it will go to respective integration in this case we have json placeholder it will send the data and it will go to client and not just that now what you need to do since we have created a new get we need to deploy this particular api right so let's click on deploy now you need to create a stage right a stage where this api will be deployed for example i can just say new stage and i can just give something called as dev right so let's say this is my dev stage so you can have multiple environments right and this is how you can deploy it on multiple environments let's say this is basically dev you can have stage then you can have prod like that now i will say deploy so now we went to stages at the left hand side we have stages so we went to stages and on this particular stage we have created this particular api and deployed it to this particular stage right and if i scroll down over here then it gave us a invoke url so i can just copy it and let's try to hit this particular api now now if you see it is returning the same data basically what it is doing it is just hitting our api gateway so if i go back to apis if i go inside this particular api and if i go to get and close this again so in this case client is our browser so it is just hitting our api gateway the method request is coming to api gateway api gateway is creating an integration request and sending it to json placeholder that guy is sending some response again our api gateway is sending a response to us so same response we are getting this particular response but now this particular response is coming from our amazon api gateway if you see this link and this json placeholder response was directly coming from json placeholder application but now this is coming from api gateway that is how you can simply make use of api gateway now here we have simply seen how we can connect to application outside your aws this json placeholder simple stuff and return the data right so that is a basic stuff we have seen how we can create api gateway how we can create rest endpoint and connect to application outside aws now in the further videos we will see how we can design a serverless application by using a lambda function so how we can connect your api gateway with lambda function after that we will also see a quick example of how we can connect to ec2 by using your api gateway right so that is something which we will see in the future videos for now what we have seen we have seen what exactly is the api gateway and we have seen the demo as well after that let's quickly go through the features provided by api gateway so first of all we have discussed is routing right so forward request to the right backend service after that it gives us security features as well so it integrates with your iam your cognito or your api keys as well so if i go back over here you will see there is something called as authorizers if i click on create authorizers then you will see we have lambda authorizer we have cognito authorizer right so it provides you security features as well so that we have rate limiting and throttling so protect your backend from overload that is something which also can be done after that monitoring so it can integrate with cloudwatch easily after that transformation so this request and response mapping transformation also you can do over here so if i go back over here here while method request is coming to api gateway or method response while we are sending it out of api gateway this also can be modified right by using api gateway so it comes under transformations after that we have caching which improves the performance right we have already seen it so it provides caching as well so there are many features provided by your api gateway so it's a very important service so in the upcoming videos we will keep on using api gateway for various our use case it is going to be fun and this is basically the start of it so this is basically the basic video which introduces basic api gateway and how we can work on that on aws so that's pretty much it for this particular video if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet go ahead and hit that red button below share this video with your friends so that they are also aware of how api gateway works that's it for this video see you in the next video